Okay, in this video I'm going to teach you how to um, acquire 19 channels of EEG data into Neurofield 64. Uh, Neurofield 64 will acquire the data and then save it in the EDF format uh, and it will put it in the patient's folder. Now in order to do that you need to select a patient uh, because Neurofield needs to know where to put that EDF file after uh, it's done recording. So I'm going to click on my test patient here. You'll notice that it's ten, uh, the ID for this patient is number 8, just so you know. Now I'm going to click uh, um, select patient continue. And now that's all I need to do. I don't need to go any further in the setup process. I simply go on the left side of the screen here and click on the button that says Q20. And this is going to open up a Q20 user interface. Um, you can create training and all sorts of different things with this interface, but you, one of the tabs says Q20 EDF recordings. Um, if I click on that, then you'll notice uh, that EDF is selected, uh, and then uh, it wants to know how long do you want to do this. Um, so I want to say um, I want to say one minute and start the recording. So Neurofield will open it up. Uh, it'll automatically start to um, acquire data. Um, just so you know, you can change a lot of the default values here. The screen for the EEG is sizable, so you can kind of move it any way you want to. Um, and then you can watch the, uh, the RMS levels as the uh, program is going. Now, if you notice here that I'm, I'm injecting a signal into the uh, the amplifier right now, which is why you're seeing all of this uh, predominant theta here and delta. Now, um, Neurofield will generate uh, all the the, uh, the numbers for you for the RMS amplitudes, um, and then uh, I think if you have Z-score enabled, it'll start showing you Z-scores as well. But I didn't enable it for this. So, um, uh, it'll keep on going. When it's done with the scan, then uh, you will see the user interface here is now going to say, recording complete, click to continue. So now, you're done. Now, if you want to find where you put that EDF file, or where it recorded it to, go to your C drive, uh, and go to Neurofield64 folder on the C drive. And then in here, you want to look in the Neurofield data, patient data, and there it is. Now remember, we were I said it was patient ID number 8, so there it is. Uh, we click there, and there you see the EDF file along with the time and date stamp. And so that's how you create an EDF file and acquire 19 channels of data in Neurofield 64.